All right. Um, we are going to learn today about two other equations. Um, we have three types of linear equations, and we're going to list them down here on the left side, sort of Cornell or two column note style. The first one we already know pretty well it is slope intercept form. then make a space for the second one, which is called point slope form. And the third one is called standard form. Again, these are the three kinds of linear equations. All three of these, when we take the equation and we put it on a graph, it makes a straight line. And they could all be rewritten in each other's form. Uh, we already know the first one, so let's take some things that we know about it. We know that this equation is y equals what? mx plus b. We know that the m is our slope. What do we know about our b? It is our y-intercept. Now, I know you don't all have graph paper in your notebooks, but I think most of you do. If you don't, do your best to make a coordinate graph in the right side. And we're going to graph the equation. Um, we're going to graph the equation y equals 1 over 4x minus 3. We've been doing this for a few days. Where do we start graphing this equation? We want to start at the end. We want to start with the y-intercept. So we're going to take this minus 3 right here. And we're going to put it down on the y-axis. That's always our first step. Our second step, we're going to use the slope to rise and run to a second point. Well, 
what's our slope on this one? It's one over four, so we're gonna rise up one and run over one, two, three, four. I'm going to use my color for slope on this. And as long as I have two points on my line, I can draw my slope, my, my line. So again, with point slope or slope intercept form, we identify the y intercept and the slope from the equation. And it says it right there in the name slope intercept. What do you think that means for the point slope form? We're going to see slope in this equation again, aren't we? And we're also going to see a point. And a point is an xy pair. This is the equation, and I'm going to be honest with you. Of the three, it is my least favorite. I find this one the most confusing. So just know that. I'm your teacher. I don't love it. I'm putting my bias out there. It can be really helpful, though, if you know what the slope is and you know what a point on the line is, you can put it into this equation and graph it. This equation starts off y minus y with a little 1. We call that sub 1. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So let's do a little bit identifying here. Use the same color you used for slope the first time. With this, we again want to identify the two things that are in its title. Here's the slope. We want to identify the point, which is an x-y pair, and the slope from the equation. Want to guess where this, the point is? Here's one. And here's the other. So let's write this equation down.
another graph. Where are we finding the slope in this equation? It's right in front of the parentheses. <coughs> so using your color coding, we're going to show that this is our slope. I just realized I never color coded this one. And we're going to find our xy pair. So we know right now our slope is 1 over 4. And we need our xy pair. The x is always to the right, and you know it because this x will always be here. This point 4 is our x. This is one of the reasons I don't like this equation. We have to be careful with the negatives. In the original equation, they both have a negative sign or a minus there. Do you see that? And this one also still has a minus sign. That means it's positive. Why? Because the equation is a negative and the negative is still there. So the point is going to be a positive point. This one though, changed. Do you see that? And we get a positive when we have two negatives. The equation comes with a negative. This is now a positive. That means that that point must also have a negative there. The two negatives became a positive. Do you see why I find this equation confusing? You always have to think that backwards way in order to pull these out. So this is going to be a negative two. Step one is plot the point. So we're going to underline these and show that this is our point. Where is that point? It's going to be over four and down two. Step two is we're going to use the slope to find another point. So our slope is one over four. Well, I can't rise up and run to the right four because I'm running out of room on my graph here, but I can drop down one and run to the left four. And I can double check that when I get there. Did I rise, if I rise up one and run over four, do I get back to that other point? I do. So those are one over four away from each other. We have two points on the graph, so we can draw our line. I know I'm biasing you against this equation because it's my least favorite of these, but I will show you how I avoid using this. <laughs> I, it can be useful at times and I will point out when it's useful, but because of those negatives, I always see people making mistakes with it and it, it's just an easy mistake to make. You can see why, right? Slope intercept is probably my favorite, I'll, honestly, because we use it so much. You guys actually started using this a little bit last year in seventh grade. Um, we just didn't really call it that to you yet. Standard form is pretty simple in comparison to this messy middle one. And it is AX with a capital A, that's important, plus capital B lowercase y equals C.
Now there's some things about this equation that help us um, connect it to the other equations. You guys right now are the most familiar with this. So I'm just going to point out our slope here is connected to which variable? The x. This ax, it's related to the slope because the x is with it. If we were going to move things around, and we will, uh, I'm just going to tell you this now, but we'll talk about it more as we actually practice later um, this week, maybe when we get back from the break. Um, you guys believe we're so close to our break? Uh, but this is going to be related to our slope. The y here, it's connected to the b, but it's also related to this y and this y. The C has no X or Y with it. So what do you think it might be closest to up here? It's actually closest to the B. It's closest to the Y intercept. It's gonna always be just a number that doesn't have an X or Y with it. But we use this equation a little bit differently. First thing we need to know about this is that A, B, and C must be integers and A must be positive. There's a couple of ways of graphing this line. Um, I don't like the example on the one I'm looking at here, so let me make up a new equation. Okay, let's make another graph over here. And I'd like you to write the equation 3x minus 2y equals 6. As I told you earlier, I'm making this up as we're going because the day is not how I wanted it to be. Uh, so I'm going to just be honest with you and tell you when I first started, I was thinking I was going to make all of these equations the same. These two are the same. Can you see we got the same line? This one's not going to be the same. As I was working with it, I was just realizing the equation for this would be hard to explain as your first time working with this, so I'm changing it. So just being transparent. Okay, my favorite way of graphing with this is called the cover-up method. And when we use the cover-up method, we're looking for um, the x and y intercept. It doesn't always work, but when it does, this equation is so easy to work with. Now I put the cover up method in quotes because that's really more like the slang version of this. If I take, what I'm really doing here is multiplying by zero. If I multiply three by zero, if I put a zero in where the x is, what would three times zero be? So that's why I call it cover up. I'm just gonna cover that up because three times zero would be zero and it goes away, right? What am I left with there? negative 2y equals 6. What's y equal to there? Six divided by negative two would be negative three. That means that our y-intercept is negative three. What it really also means is I put a zero in for the x, I put a zero here, 
and that's going to give me a negative 3 for my y. I don't have all the room in our notebook to write. You might if you write smaller than me. But let me just rewrite this over here to show you what I mean mathematically. Because I'm showing you the shortcut way, but there's real math in this. If I put a zero here, that's going to be 3 times 0 minus 2y equals 6. 3 times 0 becomes just 0 and goes away. That leaves me with negative 2y equals 6. Divide by negative 2. And I end up with y equals negative 3. My x is 0. And we just solved this, and it's negative 3. That means my xy pair is 0, negative 3. What is that point on your graph? It's your y-intercept. Do you see that? So instead of having to write all of this out, I just use what I call the cover-up method, and I cover this one up because I put a zero in, and then I solve the one-step equation that's left. It works the other way, too. I need two points on a line to graph. We've been really used to finding the y-intercept from the other equation. This equation helps us find the x-intercept as well. What if instead of putting the zero here, I put it here? What if I put a zero there? Then I've got 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 6. This goes away, doesn't it? And then I get 3x equals 6. Divide by 3. x equals 2. That means this is 2 and this is 0. So I have a point here that is 2 comma 0. Anytime you have an intercept, whether it's x or y, one of these numbers is going to have to be a 0 because you're on the line. So my first cover-up was with this one. My second is with this. 3x equals 6 is going to be... Two. But x doesn't equal 2, really. What we're looking for is the x-intercept is 2. Okay? So here's my x-intercept right here. Can I draw the line? This works great when this equation is easily dividable by the numbers that are there. Um, if this number was 17, it wouldn't work. Because 17 divided by 3 would not be a nice pretty number. And 17 divided by 2 would not be a nice easy number. So it really is a great equation if these numbers all work well together. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, then we can solve for y. So put that down there. If you either use the cover-up method, if these numbers all work, or we solve for y. And this is why we spent so much time working on equations last month. To solve for y, I'm going to take away the 3x. I'm trying to get this into slope-intercept form. If I get the y by itself, I'm going to have slope here, and I'm going to have my y-intercept here. 
right? So I'm going to divide this all by negative 2. And I get y is equal to 3 over 2x plus 3. Minus 3, minus 3. Realize this is the first one where we didn't do any slope on the graph. Because we found the intercepts, we graphed it from the intercepts. If that doesn't work though, what you're really doing is you're taking the standard form equation and you're turning it into this equation. And then you can graph from there. Well, we already have it graphed, so let's go ahead and check and make sure that it worked. Is our y-intercept at negative 3? Mm -hmm. And is there a 3 over 2 slope between these two places? So if we hadn't been able to graph already from this, we would be able to graph from this. Does that make sense? Okay, that is like the longest video I have ever recorded. <laughs> 